Domino's Pizza plans an unlikely expansion, plus the phrasal verb win over. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff. Thanks for joining us for episode 229. JR is the producer, as always, and you can find all the episode resources at plainenglish.com slash 229. Coming up today, one Italian man says it's like trying to sell sand at the beach, but Domino's Pizza is moving into Italy anyway. The American pizza chain hopes to open 800 locations in the country that gave the world pizza centuries ago. Plus, we'll talk about the phrasal verb win over, and we have a song of the week. Let's get going. The American fast food pizza chain Domino's is expanding and in a country you might not expect. Over the next 10 years, Domino's plans to open more than 850 stores in Italy. Yes, that Italy, the birthplace of pizza. When you think of Italian food, pizza is one of the first foods that comes to mind. Modern-day pizza was created in Naples, Italy, around the 17th or early 18th century. Legend has it that the first queen of the newly united Italy, Queen Margherita, was tired of eating fancy meals and requested a meal fit for a commoner on her visit to Naples. A local pizzaiolo, I can't say that, a local pizzaiolo, a, say this, a local person who prepares pizza made one with red tomatoes, white mozzarella cheese, and green basil, the colors of the new Italian flag. She pronounced it one of the most delicious meals she'd ever had, and that recipe has been known as the margarita-style pizza ever since. Legend has it. Though the margarita style pizza is still popular, pizza in general has evolved and expanded over time, and today there are huge differences between the pizza offered in Italy and the American fast food variety. The accepted wisdom is that Italian pizza the kind you get there, is the real, authentic pizza. The American variety is a clownish impersonation. So, can this cheap knockoff survive in the land of the good stuff? Domino's thinks it can. They're aiming to capture 2% of the pizza market in Italy and they will focus specifically on delivery. It's not as far-fetched as it may seem. If you compare Domino's to a good Neapolitan pizza, then you'll be disappointed. But try thinking about it as a different category entirely. They're not the same thing, and they don't satisfy the same needs. You should eat a good Neapolitan pizza as soon as it comes out of the oven. It's a personal size, and you don't fold the slices in half. The toppings tend to be different. Think artichokes and prosciutto, not barbecue chicken and pineapple. So, if you want a traditional pizza right out of the oven with Mediterranean ingredients, then you'll go to an authentic restaurant for pizza. But, if you're looking for something quick that you can slice up 
and serve the whole family at home, then Domino's might just fill that need. The second reason to think it might work is menu localization. Fast food companies practice this all the time. Sure, a McDonald's Big Mac is basically the same everywhere you go when it's available. But many fast food menus are customized to local tastes. In Canada, you can order poutine at McDonald's. In India, where they don't eat beef, you can't get a traditional beef Big Mac. But you can get a chicken Maharaja Mac. And for the vegetarians, or as they say for short in India, those who are veg, you can get the McSpicy Paneer Sandwich made of paneer cheese. Domino's already practices menu localization at its 28 existing restaurants in Italy. For example, the Margarita Pizza, named after the Queen, is only available on the Italian menu. You'll also find Gorgonzola, Grana Padana, and Buffalo Mozzarella cheeses. The dessert menu even has tiramisu. Quality ingredients are important in Italy, and Domino's in Italy uses a lot of locally sourced ingredients, including the dough. Now, finally, there is the possibility that Domino's will get a portion of its revenue in Italy from tourists and expats. This sounds unfortunate. Why would you go to Italy to eat Domino's pizza? But there is a certain logic to it. When you're in a foreign place and you've eaten local meals for a week, you do sometimes want a bit of a taste of home. There will be Americans, Canadians, Westerners living in Italy that will occasionally want the taste of American-style pizza. Sure, it may be inferior as a culinary art, but sometimes that may just be what people want. Now, there is, of course, the outside chance that Domino's will win over the local Italian population. If there's one thing more popular in Italy than pizza, it's coffee. And the Starbucks that opened in Milan in 2018 is doing a booming business, thanks in large part to Italians themselves. Start 2020 off right. Join our email list and get a summary of each new Plain English episode, the definition of an extra English word or phrase from the episode, and links to English articles that I use to prepare the show. Today's email includes an article from the Olive Oil Times. That's not even a joke, so get on that list by visiting plainenglish.com slash mail. The expression I'd like to share with you today is to win over. It's a phrasal verb that means you're finally convincing someone to like you or to like your idea after that person originally opposed the idea. That's important with win over. You have to persuade someone that's against you at first to be on your side. Here's how you heard it just a few moments ago. There is the outside chance. There is the possibility 
that Domino's will win over the local Italian population. It's possible that they will persuade the Italians to like American style pizza delivered to their doorsteps. The local population is currently skeptical. We didn't talk too much about it earlier, but a lot of people in Italy are not really in favor of this Americanized version of their cuisine, especially people who like artisanal Neapolitan pizza. But there is the possibility that Domino's will win them over. There is the possibility that Domino's will persuade them to like American style pizza. There's a funny quirk with win over, and that is the placement of the object. You either put the object right in the middle, win me over, or you put it at the end, win over the local population. Now, there isn't really a rule for whether you put the object in the middle, win her over, or at the end, win over the pizza loving nation, but it's more of a general guideline. If your object is just a word or two, you can sandwich it in between win and over, win her over, win him over, win them over, win her family over, win your boss over. But if the object is long, like a lot of words, then it's better to put it after, like win over the local population, win over skeptical moderate voters, win over fans of the opposite team, things like that. So let's practice this a little more. In this example, I'm going to use win over twice, once with a long object coming after, and once with a short object coming in between win and over. Listen for them in this example. Do you remember the movie Crazy Rich Asians? We talked about it on episode 130. Rachel went with Nick to Singapore to meet Nick's family. Nick's mother, Eleanor, was not crazy about the idea of her son marrying an American who didn't know Asian culture. Rachel's future mother-in-law was against her for most of the movie. But at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, at the end of the movie, Nick reproposes to Rachel with Eleanor's ring in a signal that Eleanor had finally given her blessing. What did Nick and Rachel do to win over the matriarch of the family? Rachel sat down at a traditional mahjong table with Eleanor, and she played that traditional board game with her. She also tells Eleanor that she's declining Nick's marriage proposal because she doesn't have the support of his family. We don't see the scene in which Nick gets Eleanor's blessing, but it's clear that the Mahjong game is what Rachel does to win Eleanor over in the end. Did you hear the two instances of win over? At first, I asked, what did Nick and Rachel do to win over the matriarch of the family? The matriarch of the family is a long object. It's a mouthful. So we put it after win over. 
But then later, I said that the Mahjong game is what Rachel does to win Eleanor over in the end. Now, Eleanor is just a single word, so we put it in between win and over. One more quick example. In a tennis match, it's common for the spectators to shift their loyalties during the match. They might cheer for one player at the beginning, but the other player might do something to win them over. The other player might scrap and fight and come from behind, eventually winning over the cheering crowd. Win them over and win over the cheering crowd. The song of the week today is Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes by Paul Simon. Paul Simon is a famous American singer, and this is from one of his most popular albums, Graceland. The soles of your shoes are the rubber parts on the bottom in the middle of your foot. The heels of your shoes are in the back, but the soles of your shoes are the rubber part in the middle. The song is about a rich girl who has diamonds on the soles of her shoes, meaning that she's so luxurious that even the bottoms of her shoes are encrusted in diamonds. It's about her and the poor boy who's pursuing her. A South African a cappella band sings the vocals at the very beginning of the song. It's always been one of my favorite Paul Simon songs, so check that out. Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes from the album called Graceland. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back here on Monday. I don't know if this is going to be Monday or next Thursday, but if the number 98.6 means anything to you, then you'll want to listen next week, probably Thursday next week. 98.6 may not be the magic number we thought it was. So I'll leave you hanging with that. Make sure to join us next week for the full story. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, if you can understand today's episode at this slower speed, then you might be ready to speed things up a little bit with Plain English Plus. Now, all members of Plain English Plus get access to two versions of this podcast They can listen to this one if they want the slower version, but they also have a private version that they can access on their phones. And in the private version, we go faster. I speak at a normal speed. So Plain English Plus members can listen to the same episode slowly and then at normal speed to train their ears. And of course, The transcripts come with interactive translations into seven languages. So if you want to improve your listening, if you're ready to graduate from the slow version, then come join us at Plain English Plus by visiting plainenglish.com slash plus, plainenglish.com slash P-L-U-S.